What time is it? Why, it's time for the Abbott and Costello Show. We're on the air for ABC here in Hollywood. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's go with the Abbott and Costello Show. It's the Abbott and Costello Show, produced and transcribed in Hollywood for your listening pleasure with Susan Miller and Batty Maldick's orchestra. So hold on to your chairs, folks, for here they are, Bud Abbott and Lou Costello. What's all the yelling hey, for? Hey, hey, hey. Huh? What's all the yelling for? What happened? I got a brand new job now. I'm going to be on the radio in Russia this summer. Oh, no. You know the uh, government controls the radio stations in Russia. Mm -hmm. They don't have any commercial programs over there. Yes, I know. Over there, even does. Can't do anything until it hears from Joe. <laughs> <laughs> hey, by the way, what are, you do what are you doing with those flowers? Well, I'm taking them over to my Aunt May. She's practicing them to be a ballet dancer. All day she stands in front of the mirror and she kicks the back of her head. But curiosity got the best of her. Uh, well, how do you mean? She turned around to see what she was doing and kicked all her teeth in. <laughs> you know, Aunt May is sure crazy about Uncle Mike Abbott. She follows him around like a little puppy dog. Like, uh, like a little, little puppy dog. Wait a minute, she follows him around like a puppy dog? Yeah, for her birthday he's going to give her a distemper shot. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> all right, all right. How is all, how is all of Aunt May's family, Lou? You don't laugh, you know, we'll send you back in the heat. Now, wait a minute. <laughs> I ask you, Lou, how is all of Aunt May's family? Oh, they're all swell except my cousin, Monotonous. He's been Now, having... wait a minute, wait a minute, wait just a minute, Lou. <laughs> Aunt May calls him Monotonous? Yeah, he was her 17th child. <laughs> Aunt May has 17 children. Yes, eight boys and eight girls, and a scorekeeper. Well, <laughs> well they certainly are all healthy, kids. You know what? When I was born, I only weighed five ounces. Oh, now, wait a minute. Hold it right there, Costello. <laughs> Nobody was ever born that weighed only five ounces. I know. If my stomach hadn't weighed eight pounds, I wouldn't have lived. <laughs> you know, but I come from a very large family, too. It was mom and pop and eight kids, two aunts, five uncles, twelve cousins, and we all lived in a four-room house with one bath. Only one bath? Yes, and what confusion. The towels were marked his and hers, and to whom it made concern. Get him out of there! <laughs> yes, the boys are on the beam tonight, and they'll be back on it in just about one minute. But first, let's hear this. Go oh, for the house. It's the exciting Wednesday night show that gives seven couples an opportunity to win a wonderful honeymoon house. A house that will be built for them on a suburban lot right in their own hometown. Yes, that's right. A brand new house to suit the dreams of any couple. The rules are simple. Each couple selects a room and begins to furnish honeymoon house. They have seven questions. And as they answer each question correctly, a prize of some furnishing goes into the house. After the third question, they can either take their prizes out of the house or they can go for the house. If they answer all seven questions, then Honeymoon House and its furnishings become theirs. Listeners also have an opportunity to win a house. For complete details, don't miss Go for the House on the air tonight and every Wednesday night over most of these very same ABC stations. And now back to ABC's Abbott and Costello Show. I'm going to sing. For my first number, I will sing Nature Boy Backwards. Nature Boy. <laughs> Nature Boy Backwards. Why? For people over 35. I... <laughs> I... 
Costello, you can't sing that. All right, then I'll sing a song I wrote myself. You wrote a song? What's the name of it? I call it Somewhere in this Big White World, There's a Big White Girl for Me. <laughs> you know, you seem very happy tonight. Oh, I am, Abbott. Very happy. Tonight I've given a party at my house. Come on over and watch the champagne flow like water. Uh, so, champagne costs 25 dollars a quart. Come on over and watch the root beer flow like water. <laughs> What's got into you? I, I never saw you so full of fat. <laughs> really? <laughs> I feel it better since I've been eating my meals raw. Raw? Raw. Yeah. I eat my breakfast raw. I eat my lunch raw. Uh, how about dinner? My mother makes me dress for dinner. I... <laughs> <You're>... <laughs> Castello, you couldn't be a big idiot if you tried. Oh, yes, I could, but I'm not a show off. Oh, <laughs> You're a whole family, you idiot. No, they're not. My Uncle Tom is very smart. He grows the finest vegetables in California. This year, he is crossing asparagus with tomatoes. What for? He'll get tomatoes on a stick. I... <laughs> the trouble with your Uncle Tom is he drinks too much fluid. Yes, and when he gets loaded, he don't want to go home. <laughs> well, how was your aunt? Ever, ever get him back into the house. Well, she takes him down to the front gate, she puts up three indoors, and when he staggers in for a drink, she nails him and puts him to bed. Then he ought to put him under uh, a cold shower. Yeah? Uncle Tom thinks cold showers are silly. Why? Well, it's like standing under a chase with no drink in his hand. <laughs> and it ain't his fault that he drinks. He had a very sad childhood. Up until he was 16 years old, his mother and father fed him strong heart. You dope. Strong heart is a dog food. Yes, they found it out one day when they discovered him under the porch, scratching his ear with his hind legs. <laughs> Doesn't your Aunt Eva ever get mad at Uncle Tom, Lou? No, she just laughs. My Aunt Eva's a lot of fun. She's a regular circus. She's a circus? Yeah, she's just as big as a tent, acts like a clown, chatters like a monkey. She's always playing down Main Street. <laughs> Hello, boy. Well, look, Costello, it's Susan Miller. Oh, Susan, darling, you look wonderful tonight. How do you feel? I feel all right today, but last night I had the hive. Mm -hmm. So I thought of Gregory Peck, and that cured me of the hive. Don't you ever think of me? What do you think gave me the hive? I... <laughs> Gee, Susan, I'm sorry to hear that you weren't feeling well. You should have called me, and I would have come over and cheered you up. Well, I wasn't really sick, bud. I was so down in the dump, so I went to see your picture in East Hank's house. Are they showing it down there already? <laughs> uh, Susan, Susan, how about you and I stepping out tonight? Not tonight, Costello. I've got a date with my sailor boyfriend. He's a first Louis. Susan, there's no first Louis in the Navy. Costello, I've been out with every Tom, Dick, and Harry in the Navy, but this is my first Louis. <laughs> Costello, how can you expect Susan to ever go out with you? Just look at you. You're overweight, you're pale, and you're nervous. Well, it ain't my fault, Abbott. My sister's baby ate up my whole bottle of vitamin pills. <laughs> that little baby ate all those vitamin pills? Yes, now he thinks he's a bullfighter. <laughs> how do you know? All day he keeps waving his diaper at the cat, trying to stab him with a safety pin. <laughs> Pay no attention to Costello, Susan. Why don't you and I step out tonight? Not tonight, Bud. You see, I'm going to a government radio school. I'm learning to repair radios. A pretty girl like you learning to repair radios? Certainly. Gee, what would those Democrats think of next? <laughs> Susan, how would you like to come over to my house tonight and fix my radio? Listen, Crystal Seth, let's get this straight. <laughs> You're not my type. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? Well, your dial is warped, your aerial's dragging, your AC is where your DC should be. And besides, you wouldn't know what to do during a brief pause for station identification. <laughs> so long, fat dog. You know, there goes a nice kid, but she's, uh, she's one and a half face. What do you mean, one and a half face? Well, she's not quite two faced. <laughs> well, just don't pay, don't pay any attention to him, Costello. I beg your pardon? I said, don't pay any attention to him. 
Stop talking with your mouth full. Are you eating something? Yes, between meals, I like to chew on something. I always eat almonds, pecans, and silver. No wonder you're half nuts. I... <laughs> I have to be careful what I eat, Costello. All my food has to be grilled. Grilled? Who does that to you? My wife. Hey, you may not believe this, but uh, she's the best griller in California. Your wife is a griller? Oh, certainly. As long as you brought it up, I think she looks like a baboon myself. <laughs> Costello, I'm not talking about a griller. And the griller I'm talking about has nothing to do with monkeys. No, then how come she married you? <laughs> Costello, you're thinking of a gorilla. I said my wife was a gorilla. Mm -hmm. A gorilla is a big, ugly-looking thing with little beady eyes, long hair, hairy arms, a flat nose, and a, a thick lower lip. That's her. That's her. No! <laughs> How dare you make disparaging remarks about my wife? She's one of the most gorgeous women I ever met. Here's a picture I took of her Sunday in her bathing suit. Isn't she a dreamboat? Don't look now, Abbott, but her cargo has shifted. I... <laughs> You can't go in there. There's a broadcast going on. Just a minute, please. What's all the commotion? My wife is in this studio with another man, and I intend to find him. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Just a minute. Uh-huh. Just a minute, Mr. Cloth. How... Well, you know your wife is in this studio with another man. I had two tickets for this broadcast, and my wife stole my wallet with two tickets in it. And I know she's in here with another man. Okay, mister, I know how you feel. If your wife is in here with another man, you've got a right to beat that guy up. Come on, come on in. <laughs> Aha! There they are! Yeah. Ah! <laughs> Give me back my wallet. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Costello. I got my wallet back. And for being such a nice guy, you will come across the street with me, I'll buy you a cup of coffee. Hey, uh, what about that guy that's with your wife? Let him buy his own coffee. <laughs> and as the plot thickens, we'll ring down the curtain on the nonsense just long enough to bring you this message. Well, it's far away to spend an evening, a Wednesday evening, that is, by listening to ABC's hit shows. One of them is the Sparkling Star Theater. Yes, tonight and every Wednesday night, the lively, melody-filled Star Theater will be heard over most of these ABC stations. For Melody, there's the popular and romantic voice of Gordon McRae. And there's also the last with the delicate air, lovely Evelyn Knight, who's famous for her special interpretations of beautiful folk ballads. But that's not all. You'll also hear the music of the Victor Young Orchestra and the Jeff Alexander Chorus. Here's a program everyone is sure to enjoy. The Star Theater, featuring Gordon McRae, Evelyn Knight, Victor Young's Orchestra, and the Jeff Alexander Chorus. So be on hand when the Star Theater is on the air over most of these ABC stations tonight at 9 o'clock. And now back to ABC's Abbott and Costello Show. <laughs> Okay, Lou. Curtain's going up on our second act. Let's go. Wait a minute, Bud. Let's throw the spotlight on Susan Miller. A great idea. Neighbors, here's Susan Miller, the singing star of the Abbott and Costello show. Here's to my best romance. Here's to my worst romance. Here's to my first romance ages ago. Here's to the boys I kissed and to complete bliss. Here's to the boys who said no. Love, ray for love, who is ever too blase for love? Make this 
A night for love. If we have to fight, let's fight for love. Some sign, cry for love. Oh, but in Paris, they die for love. Some wait away for love. Just the same hooray for love. It's the wonder of the world. It's the rocket to the moon. It gets you high, it gets you low, but once you get that glow, oh, some stuff to wait for love, others have to take off, wait for love, some go berserk for love, loafers even go to work for love, sad songs to sob for love, people have their noses bob for love. Some say we pay for love, just the same who for love. Hey, Abbott, have a look. I got a telegram from one of our listeners. He heard me playing the part of Sam Shovel on last week's show. Well, what did he say? Read it. It says, Dear Mr. Costello. Your playing of Sam Shovel, the detective on last week's program, was thrilling. I listened to your show with my ear glued to the radio. We'll be at the studio tonight to congratulate you in person. Uh, Mr. Costello, there's a man out here to see you. What does he look like? He's a tall, thin guy with a radio glued to his ear. <laughs> Never mind him. Is there any more fan mail who... Yes, here's a letter that says, Dear Lou Costello, I think you are the greatest comedian in the world. Your acting as Sam Shovel, the detective, last week was simply wonderful. I hear you are the sweetest man in the world. I love you. Wait a minute. Who wrote that letter? It's signed T O U D R S O. How do you like that? I can't even read my own writing. <laughs> Mr. Costello! Mr. Costello, I want to thank you. You saved my life. What do you mean, Costello saved your life? I'm a radio actor. I haven't worked in six years. I haven't eaten for weeks. I'm destitute. Last Wednesday night, I was about to end it all. I was about to throw myself under a bus. Then a car came by with a radio turned on, and I heard your program. You were playing Sam Shovel, the detective. And that saved my life. Listening to my program saved your life? Yeah, if a jerk like you can get away with that garbage, anybody can make a living. <laughs> Castelli, you've got to give up the idea of doing those uh, Sam Shovel detective stories on this program. You a detective. <laughs> what would you do if you came face to face with a killer? I'd run the other way. <laughs> That's my strategy. Your strategy? Yes. I'm going around the world and attack him from the rear. <laughs> well, suppose it was a girl crook. She's got big blue eyes and a gorgeous figure. Would you pinch her? Yes, sir. And I'd arrest her, too. <laughs> Costello, you're not brave enough to play the part of Sam Shovel, a detective. Oh, no. I can prove that I'm brave. See these bullet holes in my chest? Once a mob of gangsters came at me with guns blazing. But I kept advancing and advancing. That's how you got the bullet holes in your chest? Yes, sir. Tell me more. Sit down. I can't. I also retreated. I... <laughs> All right. There's no use arguing with you, Costello. If you insist on doing another episode of uh, Det Detective Sam Shovel, let's get started. Come on. And now for our murder mystery, Sam Shovel, private detective. Yes, I'm Sam Shovel. <laughs> Shovel it, Sam. <laughs> That's the finest work you've done in years. Worst chance I've had to get on. I'm Sam Shovel, private detective. I'm sitting in my little office with my feet on the desk. Suddenly I notice my toes are slowly turning blue. Taking my feet out of the inkwell, <laughs> I glance at the colander. Suddenly I realize that I haven't slept in 14 days. But that doesn't bother me. 
I sleep night. <laughs> Suddenly I feel dizzy. My head is spinning. No wonder my hair is caught in the electric fan. <laughs> Looking on my desk, I see a strange sight. A cigarette is smoking in the ashtray. I've seen cigarettes smoking before, but this one is smoking a pipe. <laughs> Suddenly, there's a knock on the door. The phone rang. Somebody is knocking on the phone. <laughs> Hello, Sam Shovel. It's Detective Abbott of the Homicide Squad, the man who single-handed smashed the notorious Red Gang, Red Wing. <laughs> then he smashed the Yellow Ring. Then he broke up the Black Ring. Then they threw him out of the jewelry store. He was busting too many rings. <laughs> Sam, what's that horrible smell in this office? That last joke. <laughs> what's that you're reading, Sam? It's a new detective story called Double Murder at the Liquor Distillery, or When a Body Meets a Body Coming Through the Rye. <laughs> Lieutenant Abbott, this next line is ridiculous coming from me to you. I'll accept it. I know you will. <laughs> L Lieutenant Abbott, can I offer you a drink? Don't mind if I do. Abbott took a couple of shots. Sam, somebody threw a rock through that window, and there's a note tied to it. Quick, read it. It says, for broken windows, call us, Excelsior Glass Company. <laughs> Lieutenant Abbott, I'd like to discuss my latest case with you. Sit down on that swivel back chair. I don't see any swivel back chair. Mm-hmm. Swivel must have taken it back. was that? Somebody's been shot just outside the door. Let's see who it is. of other fish in the sea. Yeah, but how am I going to look dancing with a flounder? <laughs> Lieutenant Abbott left with the woman. There I was, all alone with a dead man. I started to do some serious thinking. I thought of my wife and children. I don't know what made me think of my wife and children. I haven't got any wife and children. <laughs> this case reminded me of the time I caught Sidney, the knife killer. He wanted to cut out my liver. He wanted to cut out my gizzard. There was a man after my own heart. <laughs> after I solved that case, Bulldog Drummond invited me to lunch. I'll never eat with Bulldog Drummond again. I can't stand that channel ration. <laughs> I just decided to use my wrist.